creative art. I am Nilima and today we are going to do sculpture painting. Sculpture painting is done using sculpture paste and palette knife. Sculpture paste is a decorative paste which can be used to do 3D artwork and relief work. In today's tutorial, we are going to make these beautiful bunch of red roses using the newly launched sculpture paste from Dian Arts. So friends, do watch the complete video to make a beautiful sculpture painting yourself and do subscribe my channel friends for more creative art painting videos and do press the bell icon to get notification for each video I post every week. So let's quickly check out all the materials now friends. To make this beautiful sculpture painting, we're going to need two most important things. First is sculpture paste and second is palette knife. So for sculpture paste, we are going to use the newly launched decorative plaster sculpture paste from Dian Arts. And this is how the paste looks. It has a very fine texture and an amazing ready to use formula. You don't even have to prepare or mix it. You can just directly scoop out some paste and start working with it. It has an amazing fragrance which keeps you energized and motivated all during your work. Second is the palette knives. So for palette knives, I generally like to use a palette knife number 10. You also get this one from Dian Arts and a palette knife number 1002. This is how it looks. Other than that, we are going to need a strong base and for that, this time I'm going to use a canvas board of size 12 into 16 inches and its thickness is about 5 mm. You always have to be sure that your base is hard enough and thick enough to hold this amazing medium. And other than that friends, we are going to need a few pollens to place right in the center of the flower, few colors and paint brushes for coloring our painting. And the most important thing I like to use for securing my paintings is the Liquitex Professional High Gloss Varnish which is really important to secure and give a longer life to your sculpture paintings. All the materials are listed in the description box below with their links from where you can also buy them. So let's start the tutorial friends. Before starting this sculpture painting, I have made a basic sketch and the composition of the flowers I'm going to do in this painting. So here there are going to be three roses. These are the leaves and these are the three stems coming out of these three roses. And this is how all of it looks. You should always pre-plan and do the composition of painting you're going to start using sculpture paste. For making flowers, I'm going to use two different shades. The first one is coral and the second one is blush. So for the darker petals, I will be using coral. Scoop out just the amount you need for the time. As it is a ready to use paste, you don't even have to mix it. Just spread it on your base in this way. Here I'm using palette knife number 10. Start scraping the sculpture paste from one side of your palette knife in this way. Till you see an excess which will look like this. And then place it. Cut out the excess that you don't need. And this is how you get a petal. You can do the same step from the other side. Lay it down in this way. Cut out the excess. And here you get another petal. Now start spreading the sculpture paste as you need. Side of your palette knife. From one side, start scraping the sculpture paste to make a petal. So I have got my left side petal with a beautiful curve right here. You can see. So now let's start placing it on our base. Do the same to make a right side petal. See, I have got a very beautiful petal for my right side and place it in this way. Shape it and place it exactly as you want it to be. Okay, you have to keep this in mind whenever you are placing a petal. Just place it exactly as you want the petal to be. Continue the same left, right and center petal steps. As you start moving for the inner side petals, start making the smaller size of petals possible. Now start 
placing one by one of these petals to form a rose. Now here I have some yellow sculpture paste which I'm going to place bit by bit exactly in the center to make the pollen part right here. Now I'm going to add few yellow color pollens in the center. This is how a bunch will look. Now with the help of a tweezer like this, I'm going to place as many as pollens needed. These many pollens will be enough. Now again, we'll start repeating the same layers of petals one by one and complete the rows. Now for making leaf and branches, I'm going to use decorative plaster sculpture paste from Dian Arts and this is how it looks. It is a ready to use paste so just scoop the amount you want to use, place it in your palette, thread it out using your palette knife in this way. You can clearly see how smooth and fine texture it has without even mixing or anything. So at a time, take only the amount which is required and using a palette knife, start scraping the sculpture base from one side in this way. Here I'm using palette knife number 10. Remove the excess and then place the leaf. I'm going to cut the excess from this side also. Each time, remember to clean the back side of your palette knife. And now start scraping from the other side. Let there be a little excess of sculpture paste, cut the excess part, scrape it again and then place the leaf in this way. Cut out the excess sculpture paste you are not going to need. Lift it up and place both the sides of the leaf together and this is how your leaf will look. If you want you can make few lines using a palette knife in this way. So now in the same way I have made these many leaves and to make small size of leaves like this one which we are going to place in the bottom side of the roses you just have to place the half cut leaf like these ones and if possible in more smaller size. So now friends let's start placing all these leaves. To make the stems for the rows and leaves I'm going to use the same sculpture paste. I have made a cone like this and fill the cone using the sculpture paste. Use only the amount you need. Secure the top end of the cone using a tape. Then cut the front side of the cone to the size you're going to need. For example, for the starting, I'm going to need small and thin stems for the leaf. So I'm going to make small lines like this for attaching the leaves to the small stems and then I'm going to make one more bigger cut so I can make the main leaf stem and then finally make one more big cut to make the main branch or the main stem for the rose. First of all I'll start by making this stem. Now I have added a little bit of sculpture paste on the back side of the rose in this way and created a dome like structure so we can place the small leaves for the rose. So now I'm going to pick up one by one of these leaves. They are a little dry now so it's the perfect time to place them right here.
For this rose, I'm going to place the smaller leaves at the last because there are going to be a lot of leaves in this area as well as the direction of this rose has clear bottom so it should be clearly visible and well made. So now let's start making the branches and placing the leaves. These leaves are a bit dry so I'm going to use a little bit of fabricol glue to stick them on place. Now the leaves are also partially dry so I can easily lift up them using my hands or just fingers and place it directly where I want them to be. And this one probably right here. For this one, we are going to take a stem right down from here. Just use a small cut cone and mix it up with the leaf you made. You can use a brush or you can simply use a palette knife. Now once you have made these small tiny stems to the leaf, you can start making a big stem which will attach those small stems with the leaf. Use a brush, wet it a little and this is how it will look. In the same way, I have made all the stems of the leaf and now let me show you how to make the small size of leaves which we have to place under the rose for covering up all these detailing parts. To make smaller leaves, take a small palette knife like this, spread the sculpture paste. It should be this fine and smooth to work. You can also use a conical palette knife like this for making small leaves. Just start scraping from one side of the palette knife in this way. Once you have got a little excess, just clean it and scrape sculpture paste from the other side. So here we have got sculpture paste from both the sides and then place it in this way. In the same way, make more leaves. Just like this. Now let all these half leaves get dry at least 50% then apply a little bit of glue so that we can place all the leaves exactly where we want and then pick up these small leaves one by one. Shape it according to your requirement. I'm going to place it in this way, this one. The next one. And then I'm going to place the smallest one on the back. And now this is how the bottom looks. In the same way you can make the rest of the tools which are much more easier than this one. And one by one start picking up small leaves and you can start placing them exactly where you want. Now in the same way, I have made many more leaves and this is how all of them look together. I wanted the bottom part to look luscious green like a bunch. So now we'll let it get dry for at least 24 hours and then we can start doing the coloring part. 
Now after 24 hours, our sculpture paste has got dried up completely and this is how beautiful it looks. For coloring, I'm going to use acrylic colors. You can also use watercolors. The shading of roses seems absolutely perfect as I have used two different colors of sculpture paste but I always wanted them to be red. So that is why I have laid a lighter color of sculpture paste. Now we'll start by coloring our pink rose into red. So for that, I'm going to mix two different colors. The first one is neon pink color, which looks like this, and red color. I'm doing this step just to make the red look much more brighter and radiant. Here I have taken three scoops of pink and one scoop of red mix it with a lot of water now mix the paint very well the consistency of color should be like one third to the water it should be very very thin so that it directly spreads on the sculpture paste i don't really like to add a lot of color on the sculpture paste because that will hide the brightness of the paste so if you use a thin consistency like this that actually makes the entire thing look much more brighter as compared to a compressed look when you use a lot of color so whenever you are coloring a sculpture paste remember to use a very very light consistency so now using a flatter brush start coloring the rose and you'll see that the color should be a little transparent to the entire surface so that the original pink color of the rose is also visible which will actually support the entire coloring part now in the same way keep coloring all the petals using the same color and make sure that you're coloring the entire flower from all the sides without leaving any spot here i'm using a pony hair brush which are quite flexible in coloring 3d paintings so let's simply rotate the entire painting and check whether if there is any place remaining where I haven't colored and then I'll show you how does the flower looks okay. Now in the same way I have colored the entire flower moving it from side to side different angles taking a look whether there is any other color visible or not and now after completely coloring the entire flower this is how it looks. In the same way I have colored rest of the two flowers and this is how they look. So now friends we are going to add just one last finishing touch to the flowers which is highlighting. For this, I'm going to use just a red color with a lot of water in my paintbrush. This is how my palette looks. It's red. And I'm just going to highlight the edges of all the petals using this color. Only the edges, the uplifting part of this petal. So in a way, it will add a highlight and a defined look to the entire flower. The same technique I'm going to do with all the roses we have colored. After coloring all the three flowers, this is how they look. Absolutely red and beautiful with a yellow pollen center. So now friends, let's start coloring the leaves. And for that, I'm going to use a combination of two different colors. The first one is Leaf Green 62 from Fevicryl. And the second one is Sap Green 21. Both are from Fevicryl. And I'm going to mix both of these in 50-50 ratio in my palette with a lot of water. To make color for leaves, I'm going to use two scoops of light green, two scoops of leaf green and two scoops of sap green. Then add a lot of water and make a very thin consistency as if you're using a watercolor. Try to bring the shade of color near to a natural green leaf green color and this is how it looks. With this I'm going to take a little bit of red in my palette and just add a little bit of water with it and now 
this is how my palette looks this is the leaf green i made and this is the red we are going to need now this is how my palette looks with the natural leaf color we made and red i also have some extra water on the other sides now take a lot of water in your paintbrush with just a little bit of color and start coloring the leaf from one side and then also color it from the back side this time i'm just going to color the half leaf then take a little bit of red in another paintbrush and then drag it along the side of the leaf in this way and let it spread naturally from the inside i'm simply going to help it using a brush in this way wipe out the excess color and let there be a little bit of shading do the same from the back side let the color spread out and then mix it with green let it mix just a little bit from the inside and a lot from the outside in this way the leaf should have a darker color on the outer edge exactly like this in the same way we color all the leaves first use green spread it all around the leaf take a little bit of red and spread it around the tip of the leaf In the same way, we have to color these two small leaves also. Now I'm going to show you a very special part that needs to be colored is these small tiny leaves which are behind the rows. So they can be colored in two ways. Either you can directly color them using the dark brown or a dark reddish color. Or you can continue doing the same way as we do the coloring part. First by laying on green and then adding red from the sides. Mix it a little bit with green. And then finally this small leaf and the branch for branch i'm going to do the same technique first use green color the branch freshly green as you can see here and then from the bottom side use a little bit of red to give the entire branch a deep look Now in the same way friends, I have finally completed coloring all the leaves and this is how beautiful our entire painting looks. You can clearly see the detailing part we have done with the beautiful bright colors of roses. So now friends, we will let it get dry completely for at least 24 hours. Now after 24 hours, our painting is completely dry and it is ready for our next step which is to seal and secure the entire painting. So for that, I'm going to use my favorite varnish which is Liquitex High Gloss Varnish. I'll pour it in my palette. Take a generous amount in a flat hair brush. You can also use a round hair brush if you want and gently start applying it on each petal and leaf you have made. This is a very good varnish and I love to use this because it gives a very beautiful glossy shine to the entire painting as well as provides your painting a longer life.
Now after applying this amazing glossy varnish, this is a beautiful shiny and glossy our entire painting looks because of this varnish. So now you have to let it get dry for at least 4 hours and then you can repeat one more layer of varnish to increase this beautiful brightness and glossiness of the entire painting. And when the varnish is completely dry, this is how beautiful and glossy the entire painting looks. I love each and every angle of this painting and how beautifully the roses stand, the beautiful 3D look it gives as if these are the real bunch of roses we are holding on a plain smooth surface. It will look much more better if we frame this painting using a broad border. But for now, as there are no options, this is the final look of our beautiful sculpture painting. I absolutely love the entire concept and simplicity as well as the brightness and the lusty look this beautiful flowers give. If you did like this painting, try watching more similar videos from the same playlist. The link is given in the description box below. And friends, do tell me in the comments below how did you like my video and if you do like my videos, Please do like, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching.